Hey is there virtual raptors, how are you doing? Thanks for clicking and welcome. Today I'm trying out something I've seen a few other builders already do, but I'm going to replicate the idea just to give myself an opportunity to use a mod that I recently installed and pretty excited about called No Pillars. What it does is pretty much exactly what it says. It removes the building restriction of having to place wooden pillars at intervals to hold up foundations. If that interests you, I've got a video on mods and how to get them, and I'll link that above. This is also how I got this small island into creative mode very quickly, by spawning it with the mod item spawner. Specifically, we're bringing up the story island with the wreck plane lodged on top of it for some extra decoration for this build. Sometimes it takes a moment with building a path to the island itself because it'll spawn so far away but this can easily be cleaned up with an axe later. Getting started on one of these wraparound builds, mod or no mod, begins with hammering down a number of floating foundations where the water's edge meets the land's surface. Just get it up as snug against the sand as possible with a combination of square and triangle foundation pieces of your choice. Since the renovation update, there's options for the textures that can be swapped out using the building hammer. So if you don't like the first version you make, just uh, reskin it or even mod the game for adding a choice of glass floors and walls. I've used plenty of these previously in another small island construction. I was going for a modern look on this one while using as many of the assets from the furniture mod as possible to decorate. I don't know about you, but I enjoy rafts so much that when I have a few extra hours on hand, I like to spend it building yet another random raft. So I'll preview this version a little bit. Maybe you can get some ideas going about your own island? The renovation update has been very fun for me, but I'm also really looking forward to chapter 3. How about you all? Have you ventured into the story mode yet? If you haven't, I highly recommend it, and uh, if you need help, the playlist has some walkthroughs. The story in this game is quite interesting in my opinion, and the destinations it involves are rather neat and unexpected. My first awareness of the game was through a Markiplier video some time ago, but when browsing it on Steam in buying consideration, there was a screenshot that looked like it was inside a modern city which left me scratching my head of how that fit into the game that I originally saw taking place on a floating wreckage drifting through the middle of the ocean. This surely had to mean some development in the game, but a giant snow globe was not exactly what I had in mind. It was no less a pleasant surprise and a good time to play through, and twice along with the other locations, trustworthy and I are considering speedrunning Story Island for no real reason other than we just like them. After finishing off a dock or completely encircling the island in foundations, pillars and the raised platforms can be used to edge the deck of the floating dock foundations up onto the tropical landmass. We can freely build wherever as long as it isn't directly making contact with land, then keep hammering in levels which will create multi-tiered decks which can eventually support buildings crafted on top of them. That leaves us with some basic infrastructure to create a proper settlement of varied buildings for different purposes, and it gives us a chance to do a lot of decorating. If you are not using the No Pillar mod for this, it can take getting a little creative with stacking pillars two or three high to support any buildings which will extend off the side of the island cliffs. I wanted to keep most of this easily walkable to get around, so I used plenty of stairs from the dock to almost the top of the landing on the island. But once you've designed a layout for your mini settlement, it's a fun time deciding what kind of structures to craft and where. I just kept adding more docks and more buildings. A general store at the main dock, a large housing, stables, decorative leisure areas, and several more housings around the opposite side. I just kept filling in the entire island until it was covered with some kind of housing or place for humans or animals to chill out. This just means more surface area to paint and decorate, so this actually ate up quite a few hours by the time I was done, but it was a good way to relax for a while in a peaceful version of this pretty awesome game. 
Maybe it's not for everyone, but I think for many it offers a really great experience and it's one that seemingly is meant to represent amazing journeys of ancient civilizations that traveled from South America to Southeast Asia more than a thousand years ago on balsa wood rafts. It was also confirmed that this was possible in 1947 when Eric Hesselberg and his crew crafted a vessel similar to those used in old times. It will go on to sail 4,300 miles over 101 days from Peru to the island of Tomotu in the South Pacific with only the very basic modern conveniences such as a radio, metal knives, watches, charts, and a sextant for navigating in an attempt to do it very much as the people from hundreds of years ago would have had to. This was actually the subject of a 1950s Academy Award winning documentary named Contiki, and I don't think it's a coincidence a film named The Tangaroa Expedition features a similar story undertaken by Olaf Heyerdahl, the grandson of original Contiki captain Thor Heyerdahl. On some of their big build, I'll get more into the story of the Contiki voyage in 1947 and why it was funded by the United States Army, what was the point in doing it in the first place, and what was there to learn? Because actually there's so many interesting discussions about what was possible thousands of years ago, and what it has to do with settling an argument over culture, superiority, and racism. It's a pretty wild story on top of being a 4,300 mile high risk mission on a rudimentary raft. I found some really neat media from the 50s and 60s from the crew and what their experience was like or equally as interesting the inspirations that ever made them want to raft across the ocean in the first place. I do believe that we are going through very hard years until man opens his eyes and has more respect for nature and the law of nature and the need of, uh, of not uh, only be driven by greed but by intelligence and uh, by realizing that we could um, uh, risk and I think we do risk to um, have a collapse of the civilization we have. If we don't have it, it will be the first civilization ever uh, to survive. That's Thor Heyerdahl, captain of the original 1947 Contiki voyage that became the subject of much public attention. In a way, it was like the very first reality TV type experience, only played out over the radio back in the day as news outlets around the world would report on the crew's progress back to the public. Really, absolutely no criticism towards the developers, I just wanted to point out that the story that likely inspired Raft is equally as interesting as the plot of the game, if not even more so. Because the real life story is wild and has resounding consequences for understanding history or evolution of humans across the century. As recently as 2020, DNA evidence confirms that Polynesians may have met with Native Americans as far back as 1200 AD. I thought I'd get more into this whole background in the future of rap video, so if that interests you, stick around. It brings a whole new level of reality to rap the game. That it was entirely possible to survive days on a floating raft with almost no control and left to drift with the company of sharks. The plane wreck island has been turned into a home for wayward rafters and is getting outfitted with plenty of amenities, plus a few layers of paint too. If you've not already figured this out yourself, when you're in creative mode, you can use the drone camera by pressing the N key to hover around the building you've constructed. Even if you're standing some distance away from the structure, you'll see highlights of your painted color previewed over the assets and you can easily fly around painting rather than trying to reach each piece physically in the first person mode. This also makes it easier to get the roof pieces into position while being able to get an aerial view of where you're placing them. Super handy. It's helped me get this done quite a bit faster, but sometimes it's nice to just sit in drone camera mode from a distance and see if the island needs something else. But I think by now it's pretty well done and it looks perhaps like a place that people could actually survive for a while in a post-apocalyptic world. I'll do a little video tour here and then it's back to building something else. I hope you all have a good day, take care and bye bye!